you want to get on the action, we want to hear from you. Hit us up, faderoutemail at gmail.com. Slide in our DMs on IG at Fade Route Podcast. Drop us a DM on Twitter at Fade Route DNZ. Comment on our YouTube channel, The Fade Route with DNZ. Questions, comments, picks, segment suggestions, you name it, we want to hear from you. Get at us, in crowd. Welcome to The Fade Route with D and Z. Here are your hosts, D and Z. Welcome, everybody, to this week's episode of The Fade Route with D and Z. I am Z, and not much going on in terms of Thursday night this week, so... Let's look back on the week that was in the NFL and in sports. And here he is. I've known this guy since our days on Carousel Shoes, the last QB in St. John's history. Flight crew through and through. What's up, D? How's it going? Doing a lot better than Le'Veon Bell's doing right now. (laughs) Or Dak Prescott or probably Jimmy G. But uh, let's start with Dak Prescott on that one since it was, you know, one of the most gruesome injuries you're going to see. At first, when he when he was down, right, uh, I had the red zone on, and I thought that his foot just came out of his cleat. You know, it was just <laughs> until I realized it that sure he, did. yeah, until I realized that some bitch was turned sideways. But you got to feel for the guy, you know. I mean, he, he's, he was playing his ass off, and he's playing for a contract, and you know, he really, you know, as a the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, you're going to catch a lot of shit and you're also going to get a lot of glory and you never want to see a guy go down like that. No, I saw it in live time and as, as soon as as soon as soon he hit the ground, I knew something was wrong because he started like slapping at his calf almost because it was like hurting him, almost like it was like a cramp. And then I think he realized that, oh, my foot is crooked. Oh, and then he kind of started feeling the pain. And yeah, you definitely feel for the guy. Yeah, compound fracture of the ankle, had successful surgery. He's going to be out four to six months. But next man up for the Cowboys, that man is the red rifle, Andy Dalton. And that's a good thing for them, you know. Yeah, Andy Dalton played very well for the Bengals, as well as can be expected. Got them to the playoffs. Never won a round, but, you know, he got them there and played very well. How far can you see Andy Dalton taking this Cowboy team? Just division title? Do you see them winning around? Like maybe wild card? Like where, I where mean, do you the, see the East? The East is so terrible that they should have they should have relatively little trouble getting the division title. And depending on who they match up with in the first round, they could potentially win one game. I can't see them being a team like the Packers. I can't see them even being a team like the Buccaneers, but definitely playoff bound. And like you said, you know, Andy Dalton is a, is a competent quarterback. I mean, Got to give Dallas some credit for signing a veteran like him. Um, he definitely has the ability to throw the ball. Um, he's no slouch. He studies. He's never had weapons like this before. So it'd be interesting to see how he does in this in this uh, offensive system. Oh, for sure. And this is a memo to Mike McCarthy. Earth, Earth to Mike McCarthy. You have Ezekiel Elliott on your team. So here's what you got to do. Feed the beast. <laughs> and that takes the pressure off of Andy Dalton right there. That, that should get them the division title. As far as who they match up with, you're 100% right. If they run into a buzzsaw, this team's out in the first round. But if they draw, you know, a wild card team like, uh, you know. Arizona. Maybe, they could beat Arizona. They could beat Arizona. Absolutely. They I might mean, be able to beat Seattle the next time around. You know. Yeah, possibly. I mean, they could, pro- they could take it to the Saints. I, I, I yeah. really don't know. Yeah. Especially if Michael Thomas keeps punching his teammates. Yeah. Yeah. He killed me this weekend. But, but uh, Dallas, number one offense in the league. Yards per game, they lead the league. So, 
you know, Mike definitely knows what he's doing offensively. Defensive side of the ball is a mess, though. An absolute disaster. And uh, that that prevents you from winning championships. That prevents you from winning games sometimes. But, you know, he's got a uh, – you know, Dalton's going to have a stable of weapons, man. You got Gallup. You got Cooper. You got Zeke. Offensive line is not as good as it's been in previous years, but he's used to that in Cincinnati. So mm-hmm. – He'll be ready to roll with that. He doesn't turn over the ball. What is what is Dalton going to give you? He's going to give you 250 to 275 in yards, two touchdowns and a pick, or two touchdowns and no picks. That's what he's going to do. He's yeah. not the runner. you know. He can, but he's not. And he can throw the ball. He can put the ball wherever he wants it, he, anywhere he wants to on the field. 100%. Andy Dalton, Andy Dalton was a stud. He's getting up there in age now. He's Like you said, he's a competent NFL quarterback. And all you need right now with this team constructed the way it is, is a competent NFL quarterback to just don't steer the ship. <laughs> don't screw it up. Exactly. Don't screw it up. That's it. That, that's all he has to do. And if they feel like they really want to add another weapon at tight end, yeah, they, they have that guy, Schwar- I think Schwartz is his name. But um, Tyler Eifert is out there, man. He's got chemistry. He was, he's, all you have to do is call Jacksonville. I'm sure you can get him on the cheap. Oh, and, they're, yeah, they're not. I don't think they're going to try, you know, to add anything else to this offense. They just really need to figure things out defensively. I think Van Den Bosch is coming back, right? Um, uh, v- Van Der Esch, I think Van he's coming back. Yeah. Van Der, sorry, Van Der Esch is coming back. And hopefully that solidifies things a little bit. It's, it's not like they don't have talent. They have talent, but I don't know yeah. if they're out of shape or what. They just don't act like they're really giving 100% on every play. Yeah, I mean, it's really strange, you know, especially, I mean, if you go back to it, they really should only have one win, and that should be last week against the Giants. Yeah. They have and they almost real... lost that game. They right. Down 14 it... nothing, I think, at one point. Yeah, I, I mean, the Giants came out and they blitzed them. And, then, you know, c- you know, kudos to the Cowboys for recovering and then not, not uh, shrinking – once they saw Dak Prescott leave on that uh, on the uh, stretcher there, it's just but... crazy how like offensively they have to have such a great game for them to win like the game. Like they have to be <laughs> flawless, no turnovers, like get over three hundred and fifty uh, over over four hundred yards. You know they have to really take it to the team they're playing. If they're not you know scoring thirty to forty points, they're not going to win. Yeah, it really is amazing. But you know what? When you have a high octane offense like that, it's bound to happen. Speaking of high octane offenses, or what we thought was going to be a high octane offense, what the hell is going on in San Francisco? <laughs> Who is the quarterback? It. Did I tell you Miami's going to win that game? So we both had Miami. Who knows to us, man? We both had Miami. We both had Miami. No, I, I, you know, I, to be honest with you, I don't think he's healthy. Like he yeah. just seemed like he was kind of, you know pacifying his his ankle and his throws were way offline and Miami just had it going on and and you think about it Miami's gonna Miami's playing COVID this weekend the Jets and they're gonna get another win so they're gonna go to three and three that's not bad you can't be you can't be upset if you're them as far as San Francisco is concerned you know they're all jacked up because of the injuries on the defensive side of the ball um and now Jimmy G's hurt I don't think there's a quarterback controversy, but I think at the end of the day, you're like, gee, dude, can you make, just make some out passes? Can you just yeah. not turn the ball over to the other team? Yeah, I mean, you know, that that move that Kyle Shanahan did, I'm talking about the Eagles game, when he went from Mullins to Beathard, reeked of panic and desperation to the point where, I mean, Beathard got into the game again yesterday, and Beathard's not terrible. He's not great. But he's also, I mean, uh, he's not terrible. Uh, I mean, he's, he's all right. I mean, he's all right. Yeah. He's, all right, like, but, like, you know, he's, he's not making the money Jimmy G's making. <laughs> no, he's not making the money Jimmy G's making, but he's also not costing them the games that Jimmy G, you know, he's not making the errant passes. He's not screwing up the way Jimmy G and Mullins did. So Jimmy G's you know, looking, if, Jimmy G is just looking like a backup quarterback. And that's what he's looking like. He's just looking like a backup. Like he's looking like a guy. Like Eaton, as Nick, as good as Nick Foles has been playing and has played throughout his career, he's a backup quarterback. He's not a starter. He's not a guy that's going to play 16 games and get you the Super Bowl and win you a Super Bowl. He's a guy that you plug in 
And oh, look at look at where we're doing. We're playing so great. We're on a roll, and boom, we won. Um, so I think San Francisco's learning that the hard way. Um, I so I don't know what the coming weeks. They they've got a lot of talent. The guy Ayuk, Brandon Ayuk, the wide receiver. Ayuk, yeah. Wow, like that guy is super talented. I think Debo Samuel still needs to come back. He hasn't come back yet. They got a whole stable of running backs. I don't even think Coleman's even really played this year. But Mostert, w- uh, Wilson, um, McKinnon, they got players. Uh, Kittle, one of the be- probably the best tight end in the game right now, second best tight end in the game right now. So they got. I say he's one and one A with Travis Kelsey. Yeah, yeah. one one A, one A and one B. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think they're. You know they're really talented on that side of the ball. Problem is their division, man. You gotta you gotta go up against the Cardinals, the Seahawks, ah, uh, it's gonna the Rams. All those teams are playing good. Even the Rams. The thing with the Rams is that they've played nobody. They've just been beating up on the NFC East. But they have talent. I mean they they now are showing that they have two three backs that can run the football. True. You got to play who's on your schedule. You can't really fault the Rams for that, but it is crazy that somebody from this division is going to have to finish in last place. But, uh, you know, what? it's going to get down to it. We said it before. It's going to be a slugfest within that division. And as far as San Francisco goes, you kind of figured that they'd be out of it a little bit once all those guys went down. So I'm not saying you get a pass, but I understand. Yeah, but you should be able to go to Miami and beat the Dolphins for crying out. Come on, that's that's a joke, and they that's... they gotta be able they gotta be able to win games. I mean, they were able they beat up, and that's the other thing you think about. The only two wins they have are against the Jets and the Giants, and those are not like J. Those are those are more like JV teams and varsity teams. So in high school, yeah. So maybe they got some more losses to come. I know this weekend they're playing the Rams, and we'll get into our pick segment later, but. uh it might be getting it might be getting ugly over in San Francisco. It, it feels like it's getting late early, absolutely. And speaking of former San Francisco 49ers, how about the triumphant return of Alex Smith to the field for the Washington Football Club? I mean, Haskins goes out with a stomach virus, <laughs> and then Kyle Allen what well, got a concussion, and then here you go, you got uh, you know you got Alex Smith coming out here, and he actually didn't look too bad oh he looked terrible dude i mean come on i think he completed like nine passes for 36 yards he for, I mean, he's terrified for, i was terrified for him i thought he was well die. so was i and so was i but at the same time you know what it's a feel-good story man and in 2020 you take all the feel-good stories you can get now whether or not he's actually gonna do anything you know of note that's a different story. You know, Kyle Allen could be back. Haskins could play his way at practice, his way out of the doghouse. And, uh, you know, I Alex just, Smith I just might... don't think it's safe to have him out there. And he was getting killed. Like, they were coming after him. And on every play, I thought his knee, his leg was going to snap. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it, you feel for the guy. And it's just like, you, you never want to tell the guy. You never want to tell somebody that it's over. You kind of want them to come up, you know, come to that decision on their own. But, dude, like, eh, it doesn't feel – it didn't – as good as it felt, it still feels wrong, 100%. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know. I don't know where they – I don't know where he goes from here. And I think you're right. I think, you know, you came back. You proved to yourself. You can get back into the league. And you proved you can play walk away while you can still walk he walks with a hitch in his step man like he's it's not it's not a pretty sight and i they weren't taking any mercy on him either they were really coming after the poor guy um no but one thing i wanted i just want to jump back real quick to the the miami game you know i don't think a lot's being said about miami's defense i think they have two really good corners that have potential in xavian howard and byron jones i think they have they're they've got the start of something there and, you know, their coach is a defensive guy, so uh, I'm sure he's coaching him up. So I, I think, uh, you know, the, like I said, they have a chance to be 3-3 three and three after this weekend, but they, they might be – they might hang around and surprise some people. No, Miami's definitely going to lay in the weeds for a little bit, and there's an extra wild card this year. I mean, who knows, depending on how, where they finish. They might sneak in. Washington, who knows? Washington's not surprising anybody. Washington is who we thought they were. 
<laughs> oh, Washington! Washington is totally who we thought they were. Now, especially now that they're down two quarters. But they have they have a chance to win this weekend. They're playing the Giants. Honestly, if Alex Smith is out there, that you know, that we'll we'll talk about. Yeah, that we'll talk we about it later. But they got a pick. chance. I mean, but as far as Alex yeah, Smith yeah. goes, I mean, you're glad to see him out there. Uh, that he can that he recovered from this injury, but I don't take any pleasure, or any joy in seeing him and watching no. him play. If you think no, about absolutely how long he's not. been in the league, I think I'm pretty sure him and Rogers got drafted the same year, and I think he was the number one pick. And Rogers fell in the twenties. He's still around. I mean, it's a long time to be in the league, a long time to be a quarterback. He's bounced around now too. I mean, he started in San Francisco, uh, then he's with Kansas City, and kind of was the guy that was was developing those teams. And then Pat Mahomes came and took them over the top. Now he's in Washington. I mean, you can't you can't think his career is going to go much further than the Washington Redskins. At, at this point, he's a custodian. He's a gatekeeper. He's the guy keeping the seat warm for the next guy. Whoever that may be, whatever team that he ends up on, that's going to be his role, kind of like in a Josh McCown kind of way. Like he'll get you, you know, he'll start you a couple games because the, the rookie shits, shits the bed. Or has a who freaks out like Sam Darnold did, <laughs> and you know he'll he'll get you a couple games. I don't know if he'll get you a couple wins, but he'll definitely he won't embarrass himself. And you wonder, and you and, also wonder, like what what are their plans with Haskins? Like, are they going to trade him? Are they planning on keeping this guy? Like, I'm sure he's got some hey. value out there. It's clear that he's not your future. So why even why even hold on to him much longer than you are? That's agreed. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Chicago and you can throw Sam take him or um, um, even even Miami might take him. Like, why not? If you got if you're gonna get mm-hmm. nothing for him, if you're gonna get you know, if you're gonna take him for like a what a fifth round pick maybe or a sixth round pick, you can't get more than that. No, absolutely. If you're gonna take a flyer on somebody, sixth, seventh round pick, you know, you can do worse than Dwayne Haskins and Sam Darnold for that matter. No, oh. I mean you're gonna have. Uh, I mean, I could see him going, maybe getting traded to Detroit and being the heir apparent to Matthew Stafford. That you, you know, I don't, I don't you think just... you can. I don't think you can nominate him as the heir apparent, but you can say, "Hey, let's see how let's see how it goes." Like, let's, you know, we're like, kind of like what Blake Bortles did. He went over to LA just to like learn how to play quarterback again. And I, I think yeah. now he's with Denver. They haven't caught him yet, but it's like, yeah, let's just see how it goes. Maybe even Jackson go. Why not? Just go. You know, go, yeah. Why go not? I mean, as long. As long as the Giants, the Jets, and the Falcons exist, the Jaguars are not getting anywhere near Trevor Lawrence. So you kind of have to do what you got to do. Yeah. Speaking of the Falcons, <laughs> major shakeup this week. You know, Dan Quinn is gone. Thomas Dimitrov is gone. I didn't think they would go scorched earth, but Arthur he was Blank, pissed. It, enough was, he was enough, pissed. man. Enough they was asked enough. Him, like, oh, I don't blame him. Now he's like, we haven't won a game. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I can't blame him. You know, I, I mean, everybody was loud and, you know, lauding how much they love Dan Quinn. And I remember Dan Quinn with my days with the Jets, and he was an awesome guy, really, really nice guy. But it's the defense that's killing them. I mean, they're top 11 offensively. Like, they're scoring three touchdowns a game. But you got to stop people, man. You got Todd Gurley, Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Matt Ryan, and you're not winning games? What's it going to take for you to win games? I don't know when they're going to win a game. Honestly, you know what? It, it falling on the football in the Dallas game, and they'd already have, they'd have week, one at least. But, but yeah, God, I mean, it just it doesn't. I can't figure out how they don't win games. I don't get it. I don't understand where they only scored sixteen points this weekend. Like, what? What's the? What, where are we misfiring here? Well, why are we having empty possessions? Why aren't you completing all your passes? What are we doing? Yeah, well, it, it really makes you wonder. Quinn's gone. Dimitrov is gone. Are they going to move from Matt Ryan? I think it's time. I, mean, I think it's time. Know. I think I think at the end of the year, you see where his value is because, you know, if Jimmy G is still effing up over in San Francisco, maybe mm-hmm. Kyle Shanahan will take Matt Ryan. Um, he's a veteran quarterback. You can definitely – there's value there. Um you made you do. If Cam walks, would the Patriots? I mean, the Patriots would be, I'm sure, in on him. If if Cam doesn't sign, doesn't resign with them. You know, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't know how Bill views 
Ryan, Matt Ryan. I don't know if he finds him in such high regard or he covets mm. him in any way because he's not a guy that's going to get you over the top, right? Uh, Cam Newton's an X factor. And I think Bill knew that when he was getting him, like he's bringing a dimension to this team that we've never had. He's a num he's a former number one pick. So is Matt Ryan, I believe, but you know, this mm-hmm. is this is, he he's a stud athlete. This guy's an athlete with something to prove. You getting Matt Ryan really on the backside of his career, I, I don't know if Bill's really interested in, in in that. You know, if he like think of it this way, if Matt Ryan's not winning with Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, and Todd Gurley, he's not gonna win with the assortment of players the Patriots are putting together. True. But at the same time, the same way Cam Newton had something to prove. Matt Ryan's going to have something to prove. And it makes you wonder, like, with Aaron Rodgers is here. A perfect example. Aaron Rodgers is playing like he has a chip on his shoulder. And if Matt Ryan could somehow get a chip on his shoulder, he could be very dangerous. So you never take it. I mean, maybe Matty Ice will finally show up. It's an ironic thing. <laughs> I mean, it's it's definitely – I'm not going to say it's not. It's possible, but – you, know, you talk about Aaron Rodgers. I mean, the Green Bay Packers essentially drafted his replacement. Like his, he's training his replacement yeah. right now, and so for him, he's fired up because he feels like he's got time left. But he's also probably auditioning for his next job. Like, and Matt Ryan should feel that urgency right now. He should have felt that urgency two weeks ago when his team was zero three. So if if at zero five, you need you still need a fire. Or you need I have I just don't see I mean I never was a Matt Ryan fan Boston College you know I yeah. never thought he was that great but statistically he's actually pretty good like he's he's Hall of Fame borderline Hall of Fame good you, you know who you just described there Tony Romo. Ah, Big yeah. T so, you know just good enough to get you beat <laughs> Philip Rivers just good enough to get you beat. Matthew Stafford, he's just another guy. He's part of the JAG Corps at this point. He's just another guy. But see, I think – Speaking of just – I think you put Matthew Stafford in a different uniform. I think he has a better career. Uh, oh, possibly. Oh, Tony yeah, Romo's – Tony Romo. Tony Romo's actually a great athlete. Like, he's a good golfer. He's a good basketball player. He's a good everything. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I mean, the jury's out. I mean, we'll find out. I think it's a good idea for the Falcons to cut it down, shut it all down. So you ship out Matt Ryan, you get what you can for Julio Jones too. build around Calvin Ridley. And he, and as silly as it sounds, Todd Gurley, cause you got him. Like if he can get through this heat this year without getting hurt, he, he's putting up phenomenal numbers. He's scoring like two touchdowns a game. Like he's, he's doing everything they're asking him to do. Oh yeah, Dirk, Dirk Cutter is scheming very well for Todd Gurley, and it makes you wonder where where it, where it's actually kind of falling apart. Because if you're getting that aspect of the game going, it can't just be the Julio. No, Jones. it's the defense. The defense is lousy. It's awful. No, but I mean, I, I'm oh, talking about offensively. That you can only muster 16 yeah, points. You know, I think I think the last. It's not that it's all Julio. It's because Julio Jones is hurt. I think because Julio's hurt. Right, defenses are playing them a little differently. Like they're doubling Ridley now, you know. So he's not yeah. he's not getting anything. Where when Julio's on the on the field, they're doubling Julio. So Ridley's going nuts, and they don't incorporate the tight end as much as they need to. They they incorporated the tight end a lot last year. They incorporated him so well that he got a new job in Cleveland. <laughs> like <laughs> so, you know you. It's like, peace yeah, out, I'm like, gone. Oh, thanks a lot. Like the whole Peyton Manning thing. Like Peyton Manning put through, through so many people's kids through college. Ask Adam Gase. Uh, <laughs> oh, but God. yeah, I mean, uh, and they're in a tough division, man. They got to play the Bucks. They got to play the Saints. They got to play Carolina. Carolina won. And we talked about that. I was like, watch Carolina win this game. Watch them come out and win this game and punch these people in the face. Robbie Anderson. <laughs> Robbie Anderson. Break up the Carolina Panthers, man. Robbie Anderson is, I mean, do you think the Jets want that one back? I don't know what the Jets want back. Speaking of the Jets, they cut their ties with their their overpaid running back uh, yesterday, but it was official today. Ding dong, bell is gone. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you knew it was going to happen once he starts doing that passive-aggressive crap on Twitter where he's liking the 
he's liking the tweets about you know oh get Bell involved in the play in the uh, the game plan and all this stuff and it, it's I don't want to side with Adam Gase on this one. I don't like the man. I I really don't think he's a good you coach. Didn't invite him over for like, dinner. I don't think I'd invite him over. No, like if he was bringing Peyton Manning, yeah. But here's the thing. Here's the thing with Bell. Um, I don't like Gase. I don't like Bell either, to be honest with you. But I get where Bell's coming from. Right? You're losing. You were brought here. You're being paid all this money. You're not the focal point of the offense. You're not getting the ball. Now you're hurt. You're coming back from injury. They want to ease you back in the offense. I can see how that's frustrating. But at the end of the day, it's like this was the team that paid you, came out of nowhere and paid mm-hmm. you. Like nobody else was paying you this. They came and paid you. And this is how you're going to leave. You're not going to talk to the media. You're just going to skedaddle. And then Adam Gase, too, little coward, doesn't talk to the media about the belt about releasing Bell. Let's look at it this way. The Jets took one of the most productive running backs in NFL history, and they reduced him to not even being able to trade him for a seventh-round pick to the point where they had to cut him. That's what the Jets did yeah. to the most one of the most prolific backs in NFL history. The fact that he's only averaging 3.3 yards per carry, that's a punt. The punt. Yeah. Well, my my thing is this: Le'Veon Bell did this to himself when he sat out that year with the Steelers. He set this up to where teams are now going to openly question his character because if, if it's all about the money with you, you better damn well yeah. perform. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Like you're going to dance in the hole. You better be ripping off eight yeah. to ten yards, man. Because you know what? When it goes south. People aren't going to give you the benefit of the doubt. And the Steelers are looking great. The Steelers are looking great. And they were even talking about how the Steelers might take him back. I don't believe that. I think his landing place is like, you know, maybe Chicago, Tennessee, Minnesota could probably use him now that Cook's hurt. It'd be hilarious if he went to the Patriots because they would offer him the bare minimum since the Jets are paying his salary. But, you know, that would be the ultimate. It comes down to what we were kind of talking about the Falcons. It's like, Le'Veon Bell was with Ben Roethlisberger. He was with Antonio Brown, and they never won. So, what made you think that you bringing him to New York was he was going to win with you? Like, I don't, I don't see how you thought that was going to equate to, you know, this, this, this dynasty. And he's twenty eight years old, and at the time, I think he was twenty six or twenty five or whatever he was. But mm-hmm. what was the mindset there? Well, to, to be fair, it wasn't these guys. It was Mike McCagney who went and spent like a drunken sailor, and then they went and fired Todd Bowles, brought in Adam Gase, and then Mike McCagney got thrown out on his ass. So clearly it's a, you know, Joe Douglas is putting his stamp on this team, and Adam Gase is, you know, trying to cling to whatever's left of well, his I mean, it just, job. It wasn't a good marriage from the beginning, because as soon as they signed him, even Gase was like, I didn't really want this guy. Like, I wasn't... <laughs> I wasn't interested in him. And it's just like, you, you see how Gase destroys careers. Like, look at how well uh, Tannehill's flourishing right now. He's got some of the best numbers since becoming the starting quarterback of the Tennessee Titans. And this is all after leaving Miami. So what what yeah. made you think that, oh, Sam Darnell and Le'Veon Bell was going to be this great this great combination? Who's Darnold throwing to? You know, at least in Pittsburgh, there are there are people screaming down the field wide open where, you know, teams had a plan for the, the three B's, man. They had a plan for everybody. Now it's just like we don't even really worry. We're not even really worried about Le'Veon Bell. How about the guy never had over a hundred yard game? He never broke off a run of more than seventeen yards. Sam Darnold ran for forty yards a couple of weeks ago and scored a touchdown. <laughs> He has the longest You're rush of the year. You couldn't for the Jets. break one yep. free in two years. You couldn't no. find a hole. Yeah. No. Well, the, that's the thing. The hole, right, was a canyon, and it was filled with the other team. So the offensive line has definitely been an issue with the Jets. It's still an issue with the Jets, but the Jets have so many issues right now that. You know, you can't even pinpoint one as priority. No, it's a uh, it's a house, and all the pipes are leaking. And I and, and everyone's yeah. like calling and, for Gase to be fired. I don't want him to be fired. 
I think he should have to stay there. I don't think the Jets have fired a coach in the middle of the season since like 1975 or 1976. I, I don't fire him. Leave him. Leave him. I think the only reason why they let go of Bell was has... like, oh, we just don't want to deal with him. But you know, there's no point. Who wants to deal with? Who wants to deal with this team? Like, who would want to even coach this team? No, at this point, Joe Judge and Adam Gase are in the same boat, but. Clearly, like it's tipping towards Adam Gase, you know, like he's the the there's a hole and he can't plug it. Joe Judge um, with the Giants, he can definitely plug some holes and, you know, they're playing a lot better. And I, I don't know, Joe Douglas might have might just keep him there to tank it. He might realize that, man, this team's going nowhere. Might as well. This guy is a terrible coach. He's got the re- the reverse Midas touch. Everything he touches turns to shit. You just so got you just, just got a you just you got know, a question, like the ownership, like if if Charles I think it's um I think it's Charles Johnson is the the owner the the GM right now. If he was the GM of a Fortune yeah. five hundred company, he'd be fired right now. He'd be let go. He's running this thing like terrible. It's just terrible. It's a clown show. Yeah, They're laughing stock. It's I a mean, joke. It's a joke. No. And this this weekend coming up against Miami, this is maybe one of maybe two or three chances to actually get a W this year. So everybody in that room better understand this is the Super Bowl this weekend, or this is your AFC Championship game, and they better come to play because Miami's not messing around. Miami is not messing around. No. Um, and I don't. I mean, we, we, I mean, we've talked about it every week. I don't know how you fix it, and it seems like every time we talk about the Jets, we don't think it could get worse, and it gets worse, so much worse. The the wide receiver they signed to be their number one guy, Perriman, hasn't even been on the field yet. Yeah, he can't even get on no. the field. He can't even play. Mosley, the highest played defensive player, opted out of the season. The highest played offensive mm-hmm. player, Le'Veon Bell, just got cut, not traded cut so now what what does sam do well if i'm you know i heard an interesting argument today that you keep sam in place just in case you don't get the number one pick and then you know sam darnold's gonna feel really great about that that he was a second choice to a friggin' college kid and he's really gonna want to play hard for you if, if I'm Sam Darnold, I call my agent and I say, get me the hell out of here you now. He's I don't hurt. care if it's, this, I don't care if it's the CFL. He's he, can't even, he can't play. Flacco's playing again this weekend. Oh, Joe. They Joe. Joe. Oh, Joe, right. why, you know, why come back? And he's like, well, you know, I want to prove that I'm a starting quarterback in the league, but I also got five kids at home. It's like, oh, geez, Joe. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> It's Drew. It's oh. Drew Brees syndrome. Oh my gosh! Oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be. But yeah, trade trade him. I mean, trade him to Atlanta. Maybe Atlanta takes him. I think that's a great idea for them to start over. Um, they'll take Darnold. They'll yes. have Ridley. Trade Julio somewhere. Try to get a, a, a running back and yes. receiver combo or some draft picks. But w- w- Sam's just gonna stay there and get killed. They were supposed to re- they were supposed to start no, a rebuild. It looks like the rebuild is going to have to start over again. It has been so, at the bottom. Let, let me see. What do you? But, what, is, what to you is the worst? Is it the fact that they just cut Bell? Is it the fact that they let go of Robbie Anderson, or is it the fact that they have their best defensive player opted out this season? Oh, that's a, that's a tough one to be honest with you. And you left oh, out Jamal forget, Adams yes. too. Thank yeah. you for Let's doing not that. forget the first guy that took ship, Jamal Adams. What what was the right? Biggest... Well, the, the thing is with Jamal Adams is that he actively recruited Le'Veon Bell. So one headache yeah. created the other. Um, honestly, the one that's the one that's biting him in the ass the most right now is Robbie Anderson. Just because <laughs> you had him, he played he played well. He had he had chemistry with Darnold. And now he's I'm pretty sure with he's like the number six or seven in receiving yards in the league currently. Watching him, like watching his career and seeing this, 
I wouldn't have imagined that, to be honest with you. Like, Robbie Anderson was good. I didn't think he would – I don't I don't know, just his laissez-faire attitude, I, I didn't think he'd be able to reach the next level. And, you know, kudos I mean, to he him. showed he flashes did. when he was with the Jets, but, you know, uh, he's talented. I agree with you. I never saw him as a top-flight wide receiver, but uh, he, he's got a guy – he's a guy that plays with a chip on his shoulder. I'm getting hungry over here. Should have cooked up some dinner. And if you're looking for a new cooking show to binge, check out As You Eat It on YouTube, hosted by me, Chef Z. I invite you into my home and show you what and how I cook when I'm off the clock as a chef instructor. You're going to learn fun recipes and creative methods to empower and inspire you in the kitchen and take it to the next level. Cook how you want to cook. Eat how you want to eat. Eat as you eat it. That's As You Eat It, available only on YouTube. AZ, you eat it. Check it out, and let's get cooking. I'll switch the gears a little bit to uh, baseball. Yeah, the New York Yankees are sitting home. Hard to buy championships when everyone else is spending money like you are. That's the way I look at it. Um, <laughs> I think Tanaka's gone. I was listening to somebody on the radio. They're like, oh, it would be great if Tanaka could give us three innings. It's like three innings. This guy is supposed to be like one of the best pitchers in the league. I mean, he's being paid that way. And you're hopeful that he gives you three innings? Good as that. I think Sanchez is gone. Got to trade Stanton, right? Can't keep that guy. I mean, even though he carried him in the playoffs, I mean, he hit some bombs. I mean, bombs. But this team is heavily flawed. You see a t- team like Tampa – I think their payroll is <laughs> over just over a hundred mil, not even, and uh, they might be going to the World Series. They they are putting on a show against the Astros, and you know what? It boils down to this: pitching, 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 and when you think it have enough pitching, get more pitching. The Mets are learning that now. Because they thought they had a great rotation, and all of a sudden, you need to be prepared for guys either opting out or getting hurt. The Yankees, you know, they did not have anybody past Garrett Cole. Tanaka was up and down. He's eh, you know, at this point in his career, he's eh. James Paxton cannot be trusted. Jimmy Pay. I knew that Jimmy in, Pay. when he was in Seattle. You know, but, well, they made that. They made they, yeah, yeah. They signed they, that guy. It was like, who? What? Why? This guy can't finish his season. They, no, absolutely not. He, he hasn't a. demonstrated a. once. Best and then, signing ever. Oh, Happy pitch today. What? Today? My goodness. Did he get hurt? No, no. This was the mm-hmm. plan all along. We just didn't tell you. Oh, great. I'm ready. <laughs> well, well what, what about when they initially brought him in? You know, he was a Red Sox killer, and he got murdered by the Red Sox. So, you know, oh, we're going to stretch game one, Jay. Where's, where's my glove? Against who? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to throw right-handed today because I can't do this right now. But, you know, they have some young guys. They have Montgomery. They have Michael King was very impressive this year. Garcia, you know, I don't know. He's a slight guy. So who knows if he's going to be able to, to go all year? I mean, who knows? Clark Schmidt, they're high on him. But they need pitching. They need, you know, you can only go as far as your pitching is going to take you. Yeah, home runs are great. Home runs are absolutely fantastic. But you know what? You need to be able to diversify your offense, and you need to outpitch the opposition. Gary Sanchez, via con Dios, you are not <laughs> worth anything right now, and they got to get rid of you. Like When Kyle Higashioka takes your spot, a 30-year-old rookie takes your spot, you're done, Gary, bro. You get me and you have <laughs> – this is lukewarm. Take it back. Yep. And they're redundant. Their, their team is just redundantly built. All completely right-handed except for Hicks and Gardner. That was the best Gardner. signing ever, Hicks. You have, yeah. and, Let's lock him in because so many oh fucking teams God. want this guy. Seven for 70 million. I can't, you know, they got to be regretting that one. But an overly right-handed team with, what, five DHs? Sanchez, Voight, Judge, Stanton, and Andujar. They yeah, better, five DHs. Yeah, there's only one. They better only hope, play one DH at they a They better hope that the National League takes on the DH next year so they can trade one of those guys. Because if they don't, I don't know. I don't know who they're going to trade. I don't know how they're going to get rid of them. 
And you talk about pitching, pitching, pitching. Where are they getting the pitching from? What, Herman's going to come back? Is Severino going to come back? Is that who you're expecting? Or are you expecting them to go out and sign no. guys? No, Luis Severino is garbage. No, Luis Severino is the bullpen arm that they're missing. I think that he is going to, you know, he can only go in about one to two inning stints. If anything, he might be an opener for you. Great. Perfect. The Yankees have been high on Mike Minor for the past two years. Mike I can see them Miner. going after Mike Minor. Are you and serious? He, Mike Minor. Yes. Yes. Mike Minor. They've been trying to get Mike Minor for like three years now. This could be the year. And he'll and he'll come cheap. That's the whole thing. The Yankees are concerned, you know, they're they're concerned about the purse strings because no, the they're worried about the luxury we all tax are. too. But yeah, that too. But you know what? You wouldn't be near the luxury tax if you didn't take on Stanton's contract. I can't feel bad for you about that one. So you know what? Maybe you float him. You see what you can get. You probably need to you need to get a few more pitching. Nobody's saying anyway. on that contract. So maybe they, Stanton. They, they, the whole no, thing. you're gonna have to eat they're it. Gonna you're gonna need, have to eat a percentage. Eat more than sixty five percent of it. I think 75%. 75 to 80% is probably going to have to get paid by Yeah, the no one's taking it. And the only, the only taking the 10 only cents on the dollar in terms of prospects is the division, right? Because the Red Sox are rebuilding. They're going to be terrible. Um, and the Rays are the Rays. They make the, they make the World Series uh, once every 10 years. Um, and yeah, Toronto, but they're Toronto always there. is up and coming. They got a lot of young guys. They also need pitching. They have, they have competent hitters and ball players. They just don't have pitching. But it kind of goes back to what I talked about before. Right. Is like you know when the Yankees were winning championships, the only people spending that kind of money. Now everybody's spending that kind of money. So now you're in the market with everybody. It's not like only the Yankees are going to pay you. you no, know, the Angels will pay you. The Red Sox will pay you. Texas will pay you. Everybody's everybody's opening the, uh, their checkbook. So now it's more of an even playing field. And you're going to go to the place where, you know, not for nothing, but why is anybody – Garrett Cole's coming here because he, was, he loved the Yankees as a kid and he wanted to play in Yankee City. Okay, it's great. But not everybody looks at it like that. You see Mike Trout. Mike Trout grew up a Yankee fan. He loved in L.A. right now, and they don't even win games. No. Yeah. It, it, they're really it, – it's really hard to have that kind of appeal – when you also have that extreme pressure. So it's one of those things that you really like Garrett Cole, you really got to want that. And a guy like Trevor Bauer, I don't see that. Never mind the fact that Bauer and Cole hate each other. That's a, that is a very interesting thing that makes me want the signing to happen just to see Garrett Cole. I'm and just kind of curious. To beat Garrett, the shit out know, of each other. Garrett Cole was not unbeatable this year. I mean, he had, he had stretches where he was no. dominant and amazing, and he actually he played very well in the playoffs. Very good, very good. Uh, but there were times he looked human, and you know this is his first time, yeah. you know, in the American League East and and you know in this division and and playing. And we're, we're probably not going to have fans next year either. And we're going to probably go through some kind of you know schedule adjustment. But you know, and guys never had any arm issues, right? So. I don't know. I don't know. Right. I don't know. So, like, the, the first we think we the, well, the question you, we it, were posing is like, how do you fix the Yankees? And my answer is, I don't know. The, the the things I would think about is, you know, trying to float Stanton, try to trade that guy. I know you were talking about getting rid of Sanchez. I I don't know who would take him and what they would actually give for him. I don't see a lot of pitchers out there to go sign or go trade for. I think Tanaka's gone. We talked about Severino. Um, so I, oh, I'm not so impressed. But I'm one thing, so but one thing is for sure, young guys. Who's the one guy that keeps coming up and they keep sending back down for some freaking strange reason? Cliff Frazier, is that his name? Yeah, keep bringing this oh, guy Frazier, up and sending yeah. him down. The guy's a great player. If you're not gonna play him, trade him, get something for him because he could play. The guy, you tell me he's not better than Brett Gardner? Come on, yeah, come on. Brett Gardner is playing for the Yankees for his whole career because he can't play anywhere else. Like nobody wants Brett Gardner on their team. <laughs> yeah. No, Br- Brett Gardner is done with the Yankees, and the only problem is, is that you're removing another left-handed bat. So what the, what needs to happen is, for number one, no. they can't lose DJ LeMahieu. No, he's yeah. the only he's real only hitter on this player, team. Right? He's, he's a balanced baseball hitter. player. Yes, yes. DJ LeMahieu, they have to back up the truck for this guy. And as far as 
you know, I, I heard this idea of trading Voight for pitching and then moving LeMayhew to first. That's a disservice to DJ LeMayhew. Like, yeah, granted, first base is, you know, it, it's still an important position. His versatility between second and third, I think, is better served than just putting him at first base because he can pick the ball. You know what? Gio Urshela, Miguel Andujar, thanks a lot, guys. Pick up a first base nah, Gio or Shell, and learn how to play the position. I don't even know. It's funny how he starts to play good now that he's on the Yankees. Like he was on Toronto, he's terrible on Toronto. Like he's a, he's not a good baseball player. He shines because of the people around him. It's just like, he's okay, like a, yeah, a, let's give this kid something to hit because otherwise we got to pitch to Judge yeah. Stanton and uh, and uh, you know right. DJ Lemayhu. <laughs> It's kind of like the Jeter thing. It's like, oh, Jeter's yeah. so great. I, I'm like, also no, no, Jeter was the only person they could try to get out in the fucking teams because you had Tino Martinez, Paul O'Neill, Bernie Williams, <laughs> Jose Canseco, Cecil Fielder. You had all these guys coming up. Let's try to get Jeter out. Let's throw him fastball. Let's try to get this guy out. But the Yankees need to somehow get more left-handed. And, you know, like all the guys who are available, they're all right-handed with the exception of one guy. And his position's taken, and that's Didi Gregorius. I, I mean, the Yankees sorely missed Didi Gregorius this year, not just because of a left-handed bat, but he definitely brought something in that clubhouse. And Glaber Torres, yeah, a shortstop, no, left a, short a lot stop. to I mean, be desired. Second baseman, and that took him out of his element. You know, people were saying he didn't play good this year because of, you know, the, the shortened season. And everything. It's like, no, it's because he doesn't play that position, man. And that messes up your whole flow. Like, no. he's a second baseman. He doesn't need to go out there and be worrying about – throwing the ball from the hole, trying to grab it. Like, he's a – come on. You're ruining this guy, and he's really good. You could trade him. You could no, actually yeah. trade I mean, Glaber was – Start pitching. And they, I think they had a chance to do that with the Mets. The Mets wanted him, and and they – and uh, the Yankees mm-hmm. wouldn't give him up. And they were willing to trade, I think, some one of their big guns. I don't know if it was Syndergaard or if it was DeGrom, but I know that they coveted him at one time. Oh, I mean, he's definitely, I mean, he is a coveted prospect. Schmidt and Duhar and Michael King is really, you know, he has kind of bloomed a little bit. And Davey Garcia, those guys, I would want any or all of them in a trade. And, and you know what? Throw in Clint Frazier too. Those six guys, if I get two of those guys, maybe you're getting my stud pitcher. Because you know what? They're major league ready and they're going to perform. But on the Yankees, like, I, I don't know what Cashman is doing. And he really needs to take a bullet here. He really needs to come out and say, I screwed he won't this say up. It. And he won't. I need to fix it. Because I know he won't say it. But at the same time, you know, we can see it. The proof is in the pudding, man. We can see it. We have eyes. Don't try and snow me and tell me that, you know, this team is any better than it was last year or two years ago. It's not. It's more right-handed. Which is you're you're playing in Yankee freaking stadium. Why do you have all these right-handed hitters? Like, it doesn't make any sense. This design is flawed. Own it. Fix it. It's your job or it's your ass. If I was if I was the uh, the owner of the Yankees, if I was Steinbrenner, I would call him into I would call him into the office and say, Hey, hey man, man <laughs> this has been a great run. Hey man. <laughs> hey man, hey Cash, Cash, this is a, you did a great job, but you know what? Give me a staying, fucking staying in the American League East now. Game. Boston still needs a manager, I believe. I don't see Cora going back there. I don't even think they would take the the former manager of the Astros. What direction do you think they're going? I don't know, man. To be honest with you, Alex Cora, like he's going to get another job eventually. It's a question of when. AJ Hinch, I don't think he's the right fit for that team. But you also really can't go with a young manager either because you're going to saddle him with a, with a rebuild. They're going to fire him, and then you're going to bring in another guy. So it's really, I mean, at that point, just, you know, maybe promote the AAA manager or do something like that. Because, you know, at the end of the day, like you're setting the, this other guy up to fail. Heim Bloom, you're just going to set this, this new manager's new hire up to fail. I'm not sure it um, matters, though. I'm not even sure it matters. Like, Boston what's interesting? so terrible. It really doesn't even matter who their manager is. I mean, Ron Renicky this year did an awful job. So he, he got canned. They're looking to rejigger the, the staff anyway. 
you know, maybe they take a chance on a guy like a George Lombard or a Marcus Timms or all the guys that don't get hired by the Tigers or the White Sox, you know, take a bunch, you know, bring in a bunch of guys for interviews and just kind of see who wows you, you know, at the end of the day, it, it, you, you're going to know your direction and you know what you, you know, the kind of guy that you're looking for, just cast a net, cast a wide net. And you don't, it doesn't have to be a name. Kevin Cash wasn't really a name and look at him now. So, I mean, anything is possible. I heard something very interesting today that may influence the other chess pieces going on. The White Sox asked for permission to interview Tony La Russa for their vacant managerial position. Tony La Russa has not managed. <laughs> I couldn't figure out if you forever. were drunk, out if you were drunk or dead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anything I, worth doing uh, is worth doing, right? I think, he, I think that's where he started, right? Didn't he start there? He did. Yeah, he was. I mean, if you want to come <laughs> it's full a feel circle, good great. Story. But I don't, I don't know, really know. Definitely... why they got rid of. Uh, was it Renteria? Yeah. That was who was there. He, he he's all right, and yeah, the White Sox are stacked too. They got a lot of talent. I don't I don't know what their problem was. Um, <laughs> Rusa. Yeah, you guys uh, want their White Sox. The White Sox are on the team. come, man. But Me. they also fought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, exactly. I think 1979 was when he first managed that team. But, um, yeah, they also fired Don Cooper. I mean, Don Cooper's been there forever. He was there, I think, when Gene Lamont was there. And that was in the mid the early 90s. So Don, Don Cooper is like a, a Chicago staple along with, you know, I think, uh, Field Ryan and an Italian beef team. sandwich. Uh, I don't – yeah, I don't uh, – <laughs> whatever. I mean, White Sox are good. Yeah. I actually thought they were going to be better in the bubble. I thought they were going to be able to, you know, advance and be a World Series contender, just because they had a lot of talent. They they have uh, that guy Lewis Roberts is really good. Um, they have a couple of pitchers that are really good. I thought they had a yeah. chance, but psych. Hey, it's you know it it was a weird year, and it's a year of experience for them, and they'll be better for it. They definitely. You know the the White Sox are on the rise in that di- in that division. The Twins are the Twins. The Indians are the Indians. And uh, I mean, if the Indians end up getting rid of Francisco Lindor, that's their death knell. So that moves them that moves the White Sox above the Indians, in my opinion. And then the Royals and Tigers suck. The Clippers and the Rockets. Ty Lue seems to be getting a lot of interest from both teams. Van Gundy, uh, Jeff Van, Gu- uh, Stan Van Gundy, not to be confused with Jeff Van Gundy, could possibly be- become the coach of the Rockets. Uh, do you think either coach fits better in a different, you know, with a certain team? Honestly, I don't know what Tyron Lou is as a coach. I mean, he basically, I mean, he is to LeBron. No, Adam Gase you can't was say to Peyton that. Manning. I can't. I can't, can't fairly he, assess Tyron. He's been around Lee. though. Like, I, just, I can't do it. He was on Doc's coaching staff with the. I believe he was on Doc's coaching staff when he was with the Magic. Like he spent time as an assistant. It wasn't just you know he got the job in Cleveland and and then it just, you know it just blossomed from there. He I think he knows his stuff. I'm not trying to say like he's Phil Jackson or anything, but I think he knows how to d- diagram an out of bounds play. I think he knows how to relate to players. You know, that I taught, you know, it's very, very important as an NBA coach to be able to communicate with your players um, and uh, respect them because the players run that league, not the coaches. Yeah, but here's the thing, like Tyron Lue without LeBron got fired six games into his career, into his season without him. So, you know, it's one of those things that you can't really I can't se- I personally cannot separate one from the other because you only got six games. You know, I only got six real games. I need to see more before I can totally evaluate that. And you're throwing them in there with Russell yeah. Westbrook and yeah. James Harden or Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Like I, I need to see more. I, I got, I, I need to, I need to evaluate him. And I mean, with Jeff Van Gundy, no, Stan like Jeff Van Gundy already Stan. got fired by the Rockets. Like, it's uh, Stan. Oh yeah, because he's he's doing such a great job relating to people. I mean, look what he did yeah, with Dwight they, Howard. They hate the each other. Of the so you really think he's going to do well finals? with egos? He did. He was absolutely he was. 
but he wears out his welcome quickly. He also went to the Pistons and he wasn't that great with the, he didn't do that well with the Pistons. So, you know, he's one of those guys, he has a limited shelf life. Like he'll, he'll work you. I mean, it also happened in Miami too. Well, that was, like, that he'll was, work that, you, he'll that, work you. Pat and Riley then eventually they get tired. Team from him and he stole that championship from him because that was his team. He developed that team. He made that team good. That was really, people forget that. That was really wrong. And I also see that he's being considered for the Pelicans job too. That might be, that might be nice for him to coach Zion. See, I like that better. I, I like that fit a lot better because Zion doesn't, he doesn't feel, I mean, he's a superstar, but he doesn't behave like a superstar. Like he's just like Dwight Howard, his ego oh, got Jeff in Van the Hunt way is of being considered for the Rockets job and the Clippers I'm, job too. So both both brothers are being considered. That that could be very interesting. Yeah. But, you know, hey Jeff, how'd you do? What questions do they ask you? If if I could see which coach would do better and where with which team, right? I think Stan needs a big man. So I don't think him going to Houston would work out very well. I think he could do well with the Clippers. And I think he could do well with the the Pelicans. I think the Clipper job would probably suit him the best. As far as Jeff Van Gunny is concerned, I think he could do the Rocket job. And I think Tyron Lue uh, would be good for the Clipper job, not the Rocket job. I agree with Ty Lu. He's already there. Uh, there's continuity of voice, just like same thing with Cleveland when he got promoted. Uh, there's continuity of voice there. Jeff Van Gundy. Jeff Van Gundy hasn't coached in over a decade. Same thing with Stan Van Gundy. I, I don't know if, nece- if it's necessarily a risky hire, but uh, I don't. For me, the better fit is Stan Van with New Orleans, just because of the style of ball that they play. I mean, Jeff Van Gundy with a small team, I don't know. I, I just don't see it working very well. But um, uh, far be for me to, to ask, but what the hell did Mark Jackson yeah. do that he can't even get an interview? Like, I mean, Mark Jackson was the predecessor to Steve Kerr. And yeah, I don't Steve really Kerr know should what be sending him a there. Christmas card. You know, rumors are that he's not really like a GM guy, like meaning like, you know, the GMs are the mm-hmm. like to take the coach and go like play golf and stuff like that, and he's and he's also more of like a balanced mm-hmm. team. He wants his players to play defense. He wants to run an old school offense. You know, he's not about chucking up threes. So, and, yeah. So, so it uh, kind of sounds like the game is passing passing by. Little by. Little bit, huh? It's just that you know he could probably get a gig with a small market team, like maybe even maybe the Pelicans. But I, I, it's not like I sound. It doesn't even sound like he's like fighting for a head coaching job again either. I think he likes his role. Yeah, I find that very interesting because you know he did he did a very good job in Golden State before they canned him, and you know he he really yeah. But you now see the potential success. that the the Warriors had, and you're like, wow, he was kind of holding them back, you know. He did talk about them being like the yeah, you know, I, I can see that. You know, he, he, Curry being the best, you know, teammates or best two guards ever in the history of basketball, and he turned out to be somewhat right. But you know, you had that you couldn't really get out of the first, the second round. This team, this team broke the record for most wins in a regular true. season. I mean, so I don't know, but um. Uh, let's uh, yeah, let's let's dive into our picks for this week. Uh, sh- we've got some exciting games. These are going to be. I mean, it's going to be a very good weekend, especially, you know, considering the fact that we have a we have a few we have two more Monday night games. Where I think that's going to be a trend for the rest of the season. I really, you know, if we just move forward with that, I think everybody would be happy. And a lot of great matchups here. And a lot of interesting ones just yeah. based so on the Cam events Newton of this past Yeah, so Cam Newton came week. off uh, COVID reserve. Uh, he should play this Sunday. So will New England and Cam beat Denver? 
If Cam plays, I got Pat's I got win. New England winning Plain regardless simple. of the quarterback is. <laughs> New England had two weeks to prepare for Denver. Denver in trouble. Uh, <laughs> okay, and then we have Houston playing Tennessee. Tennessee is hot right now. I I just I don't I can't understand what happened with the Bills. You know, I Tennessee hasn't been playing. They haven't really been they practicing. Had three and practices they went, in they 16 days. Buffalo. Everything was done on Zoom, and they beat them like they hadn't practiced in. Yeah, yeah exactly. So with, with that being said, I'm actually I actually can't gonna take against Houston the Titans because I They're, think they got Tennessee this might be a little punch drunk over slapping the Bills around. Um, we got Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Believe it or not, this is a big deal. You got the four and zero Pittsburgh Steelers against the four and one Cleveland Browns. Who you got there? I'm taking the Steelers. You know, this is the game. These are the kind of games that the Browns lose. Like they'll they'll talk themselves up. They'll puff their chests out, and then they'll walk in. I the think this is also the get their first asses game since kicked. the Miles the exact- uh, Rude the the Rudolph situation. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben's but a big dude. he's not gonna do that to Ben. Ben is a big dude. You think everyone's all that. forgotten? I don't think there's gonna be any chippiness, but um, I have uh, no, Baltimore they're, they're beating be. Philly. No. Baltimore's gonna beat Philly. It's not gonna be that close. And I mean, I think Carson Wentz still has only me. one wide receiver. I think worth he is. Note. I think so. I think he's. Oh, it, it, he's going to be there. It's not going to. It's not going to make that much of a difference, but it's going to make. It's going to, you know, it's going to uh, impact the score. Um, and then bit, I think the, the Giants result. get their first win this weekend. They beat Washington. We're in agreement. Um, I think the Giants have been playing better. Now, the fact that they're playing the Washington football team with Alex Smith at quarterback, maybe Haskins will play, <laughs> depending on whether or not that stomach bug actually went away. Um, I mean, the, the Giants had a top 10 defense at one point. Granted, it was week three of the season, but um, Daniel Jones just needs to get the hell out of the way. Um, if he does that, the Giants. I have Minnesota beating Atlanta. This was a toss up for me. At first, I was like, Atlanta's got to get this W, man. Got to get this W. Then I, Minnesota played the Seahawks very tough uh, last weekend. So I, at the last second, I was like, you know what? Minnesota is gonna gonna pull it over Atlanta. I'm taking the Vikings just for the simple fact that last week impressed me to a degree. Kirk Cousins still is not playing well. Um, if Alexander Madison has a has a game like he had definitely out. this past week, they'll be a okay. I don't know if Cook is definitely out, but he definitely he tried to. I mean, he tried to play, and then he ended up on the sideline. So <laughs> yeah, uh, with a groin really pull, I wouldn't it risk it really anyway. <laughs> no, dude, he just uh, rolled up on uh, like, dude, so, my ball. Uh, Detroit, I got Detroit beating Jacksonville. This was another toss up. <laughs> Yeah, I mean this is this is definitely tough. I'm gonna take the Lions as well. I mean, it's gonna be close. No, it wouldn't yeah. surprise me if the Jacksonville yeah. Jaguars I won. Mean, you would think, but Detroit I'm gonna take two the Lions. To prepare, prepare for this game, you think they would, you know, win? Uh, in Indianapolis against Cincinnati. You hope. Yeah, I got the Bengals taking taking this game and. Uh, Philip Rivers looks old. He looks shot, and Burrow looks like a legit yeah, NFL Rivers quarterback because like he is week. a legit. I'm, NFL but I'm still going to take Indy Indianapolis just because their defense is really good. So I think their defense will give uh, the Bengals some problems. Um, I'm actually taking the Carolina Panthers over the Chicago Bears. So am I. I really like what the Panthers are doing. Yep. Matt Rule is proving himself to be an NFL head coach. And, you know, Bridgewater to Robbie, it's, like it's, it's, it's yeah, a thing. It seems like it's, it's actually it's really it's happening, out. and it's fantastic. I think, uh, as we spoke about earlier, I think the Dolphins are going to beat COVID. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, my only question is how many touchdowns is Ryan yeah, Patrick going to throw for? I, I, my money's on four right now. He's a yeah, former. I, I think he's going to have a huge <laughs> game, one way or the other. Either a huge disappointment. I think or the game of the week success. is uh, Tampa way, Bay against Green Bay. Uh, Rogers against Brady. I'm going to take my man Tom. Yeah. I got the Packers. I think that Definitely. you know that they're, they're playing very well right now, and you know now the Tampa Bay is still not ironed everything out. But uh, yeah. later in the year, I guess maybe that. this would be a toss up. But for me, that. right now, um, and then Green we Bay's got playing too well. I got LA over San Francisco. Yeah, the Niners aren't. The Niners look like crap right now. They're. They're in a little bit of disarray, and the Rams are doing what the Rams do. So I don't I expect. Be sur- I, mean, I, I, think I might put up a fight. Don't you know, expect might put up a, a blowout. You know, but... division games are always hard. It's always hard. Yeah. Well, it, 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 if CJ Beathard ends up in this game, <laughs> the, uh, it's going to be a blowout. <laughs> the another another. He's really played two weeks in a row, man. Be the Chiefs against the Bills. Oof, the Chiefs are going to be so pissed after losing to the Raiders, but the Bills are going to be pissed after losing to the Titans. This is going to be an awesome yeah. game. It may rival for the game of the week, but I'm taking Mahomes. I don't think they're going to lose this one. Josh Allen used to play better than he did against the Titans, and he might get a little bit fatter against the Chiefs defense, even though it's not that bad. Uh, but the Chiefs are going to take this the one. Chiefs, but Buffalo plays defense. They do. They play defense. So I think it's going to, I think it's going to be closer than people are going to give it credit for. I know Kansas City's coming off of, uh, you know, a tough loss, but Buffalo's legit. And then the last game is. Uh... Well, there's a lot of injuries with Buffalo, though. You got to be concerned about that on the offensive side of the ball. Okay. They might not be able to, uh, and then they I got, might not be able to keep uh, Arizona up. Arizona taking out, beating Dallas just because they can't stop them. They're not going to be able to stop them. No, it's going to be a shootout. Um, the Cardinals are taking this game. Like you, you have way too much talent on that team and a sieve-like yeah. defense. Over you under gotta five win this game positive if you're COVID tests this week. <laughs> yeah, probably. I'm they just had a call over. off the Gators yeah. against uh, the Tigers. So, yeah, it's probably going to happen. Yeah, I mean, it's it's bound to happen, especially now that you're also letting a limited amount of fans back in the stadium. So, I mean, the players may not get it, but there may there will be some spread. I mean, it's just yeah. bound to happen. Unfortunately, welcome to 2020. It's been three years. We can't get out of this year. 2020. Fast <laughs> Christ, Al- Christ Almighty! You know that is yeah. truer words have not, never been spoken. Well, this has been the Fade Route with DNZ. Thank you for getting faded with us. If you would like to be part of the show, email us at faderoutmail at gmail. We love our fans. Feedback, we love our comments, sponsors. Your Support picks. our sponsors. Because... Let us know. We love our fans. Support yeah, our sponsors absolutely. and uh, keep the lights on. For All right. Us. Till next time. Another. Until Thank next you. time, brothers. Another good one. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to this episode of our podcast. If you like what you heard and want to hear more, be sure to like and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Rate us five stars. Leave us a review. Turn on subscription notifications and tell your friends. Spread the word. Spread it wide.